Hi, I'm Kate from the Small Things blog. Today I'm going to show you how to do this beautiful French twist featuring this beautiful hair clip by BHLDN. I know I keep saying the word beautiful, but it really, the French twist is a classic and there's really no other word to describe this hair clip. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of a reverse French twist. Instead of working up the head, we're going to work down the head. You'll see what I mean once we get into it. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So all that I've done to my hair this far is styled it like I did in the very beginning of my bouncy curled under hair tutorial. I'll include a link to this tutorial either on the blog post or in the little information bar under the YouTube video. But all I did was flat iron it, but do a really strong twist to my wrist and pull it all the way down so you're left with a really kind of bouncy C shape. And then I just wrapped up whatever section I flat ironed in my fingers and then just slipped clips in it to hold it in place. So you can watch that entire technique and start with hair that I've got right here by going back to that video. Um, my hair was shorter then but I did the exact same thing. So what we're going to do in order to get the texture that we need for the French twist is add a little bit of dry shampoo. I've mentioned this before, I love using dry shampoo as my sort of texturizer because it's really light and it doesn't leave any waxy or oily residue. Um, this is by KMS, it's called Hair Play Makeover Spray, and it's my favorite dry shampoo that I've ever used. It has absolutely no white powder, so you don't get any of that sort of gray roots effect, which, you know, a lot of people pay to avoid. I'm just going to kind of mix all this all over, just to give it some texture. And then rub it around with your hands. Really don't be afraid to get your hands all the way into your scalp just to rub it around. You want really fluffy hair to start with. Okay, so once that's all sort of deposited throughout, grab a comb. I'm using a Cricut comb. I cut hair with these. Um, it doesn't really matter what kind of comb you use, just one that's really strong. I like that the back of this has a really thick piece of um, plastic because I don't snap it in half when I'm teasing or using it. Um, we're going to tease using the fine tooth side and we're going to tease everything. So I like to start at the crown, sort of at the top of my head, and then go back. We're teasing all the way down to the nape, and then we'll do the same thing on our left side. In my last video where I was teasing my hair, a lot of you commented about how serious my face was, but you must remember this is how I look every morning. So although it might be shocking to you, this is extremely normal. In fact, my husband doesn't even think twice when he sees me like this in the bathroom, which I appreciate, because he knows this is the deal. All right, so once you've teased it, and you've got a good foundation around the roots, we're gonna soften it out a little bit with our fingers, but like I always say, you wanna keep the bulk of the teasing in there, so you really wanna just focus on softening the top hairs. So don't even worry about any of this down here. You just want it smooth where we're going to be pulling it back for the twist. If you need more smoothness that you can't get with your fingers, take the wide tooth end of your comb. Alright, so once you've smoothed the majority of it out, Find a light hold hairspray or something that has a little bit more give than what I normally use, which is Kenra Volume 25. Love this hairspray. Um, but for the sort of setting part of this style, I'm going to use this hairspray by Aquage. It's their Biomega line. It's called Firm and Fabulous. It's probably one of the best working sprays I've ever used because it almost feels like you're putting nothing in your hair but you'll give it a, enough hold to where it's not going to just kind of fall and melt, but it doesn't leave any sort of resistance. So you could spray this all around your hair 
and then immediately after run a comb through it and it won't feel like you added anything else. But magically it gives you a good amount of hold. So this isn't strong enough for me for a finishing spray, but for a working spray, I like it. If you hate the feeling of really firm hairspray, give this a try. I'll include a link on the blog post so you can find it. So now we'll start the French twist. The aspect that is most important of this hairstyle is the first section that we're going to pin back. So for me, since I'm essentially parted on my left, I'm going to pull my left side back first and then we'll go over it with the right. And we're going to kind of crisscross the bobby pins as we're placing these hairs back. So you want to grab the top section, make sure you're all smooth, and bring it back to the center of your head and stick a bobby pin in it. Grab another pin and make an X right over the pin you just put in. Grab a second section of hair and follow the same steps right below those first X's that we established. Grab the last section and do the same thing. You're basically pushing all your hair to the right and putting these X's in to hold it over there. So once you have all of your hair pushed to the right and you have enough bobby pins holding everything, we're going to do the same thing, but instead twist and fold the hair under and then slip the pins in a little bit more hidden all the way down. So we're going to start by grabbing a section near our crown. Do this in small sections if you're a little bit nervous about it or if you've never done this before. It's a lot easier to handle small amounts of hair instead of really big, thick sections. So I grabbed this part on top, brought it around over the X of bobby pins. You can see I'm holding it with this finger, and we're gonna slip a bobby pin right next to where this finger is holding, right parallel against it. And then we'll just continue that same technique all the way down. So since we're doing the reverse French twist, and instead of working our way up the head, we're going down, you'll be left with this adorable little tail if you have hair that's long enough to leave it. And the goal will be to kind of push this up into the section we just worked on so it's completely hidden. There's no real method for this. You just kind of want to take pins and hide it up there, and then we'll pull that section over so you can't peek up into the updo and see anything that you've done up there.
So once you've tucked those pieces in there, so you can't see any of this evidence, we're just going to push this bottom section against our head and slip a few pins to hold it down. So once that's completely covered, you're all set. You've got this beautiful French twist that's going to be a showstopper if you're going out to an event. But you saw it was a really simple, basic way to pull the hair back. And like I always say, once you break it down into sections, it's really just kind of maneuvering the hair step by step. And it really wasn't that complicated to do. So we'll finish this look by using this absolutely beautiful bridal clip that I got from BHLDN. Um, I don't know if you've heard of that store, but they're kind of a sister store of anthropology, and they have absolutely stunning wedding dresses, bridesmaid dresses, hair accessories. It's beautiful. So we're going to tuck this right where sort of the crease of the French twist is, and it's on this really simple to use duckbill clip, so no bobby pins or no comb or nothing like that. You just kind of slide this right in at the crease. A beautiful focal point to a really classic hairstyle. If you want to see any other hair tutorials, be sure to check my blog, thesmallthingsblog.com. And thanks for watching.